Chelsea from Pisces Pet Emporium and I'm here to answer some of your questions that you posted on Facebook and social media. I have been working at Pisces for a long time. I'm quite knowledgeable in pets. Of course, I don't know everything, so I will be answering to the best of my ability. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them. <laughs> I heard when dogs fight, you're supposed to grab them by the hind legs and spin them around. Is that true? Yes and no. There are quite a few different ways to break up a dog fight. Obviously, it's dangerous no matter what you do. Why you grab them by the hind legs is it's the furthest away from their mouth. Grabbing the aggressor by the hind legs and trying to remove them that way is the safest way for you. A loud noise, a hose, a stick in the mouth, anything that keeps you out of harm's way. I know you love your dogs. We all love our dogs. But you do not need to get hurt as well. Really make sure that you keep your dog on a leash if you can. If you go to off-leash parks, make sure you're monitoring your dogs and other dogs' body language because really preventing a fight is the best thing to do. Breaking apart two larger dogs, especially fighting, it's quite dangerous for everyone involved. So I was thinking about getting a camel. Which is better, one hump or two? <laughs> yes. I think more is always better, so I would go with two humps. You know, they have more fat stores than two humps, so maybe you have to feed them large amounts less frequently. But I personally wouldn't own a camel. I don't know, rumor has it they spit, so not my choice. So I know for rodents, you are allowed to hold some. But which ones aren't you allowed to hold on serious condition, like a serious adoption? I'm going to first answer if you're in store and you want to hold rodents. We're pretty open. You're allowed to hold most of our rodents, even if you're just kind of looking. We understand that's how people fall in love with pets, holding them and interacting with them. Mm, yeah, they're sweet. However, sometimes each individual animal might have a different stress level. We might know that that one just came in, but for the most part, you can hold most animals. The chinchillas that we have, we try and only handle for serious adoption just because the oils in your hands are not good for their coat and handling too frequently can cause them to drop their coat, which is called slippage. So that's one that we try and avoid. If you really want to see one, we can be persuaded typically. If that question was about which rodents you can handle more at home. Dagoos need a lot of interaction and a lot of handling. Ferrets, obviously, which aren't technically rodents, but we're going with small animals. Rabbits need to be handled frequently. Hamsters, not so much. You, you kind of like, not too much of handling. Same thing with chinchillas. Guinea pigs, a lot of handling. They're really good. Yeah. Are you gonna like insert my chuckle in there all the time? <laughs> Hey, my cat just had a urinary blockage. He is three years old and was on Purina Cat Chow and Urinary Pro Plan, wet from the vet. Now the vet tells me that dry food is not good for my cat and to just stick with the wet food. I'm wondering if I can soften the dry food and feed it to him. Won't feeding just wet food rot his teeth? First and foremost, your vet is the best. A good relationship with your vet and following your vet's advice is top choice. I do not argue with vets. They know their stuff. But I will tell you, yes, wet food is the best for urinary blockage. I have a cat also that has had two urinary blockages. He is on a wet food. My vet has not said that I don't feed kibble yet, so I do feed kibble, but wet food is always best. So if your particular vet has told you that you should be feeding just wet, I recommend feeding just wet. Wetting his kibble isn't gonna help his teeth anyway either. You will need to probably brush your cat's teeth. I know, that sounds terrible, but trust me, slowly but surely, with some yummy toothpaste on there, maybe smear a little bit of a treat on there, and work your way into your cat's mouth trying to brush his teeth. If you can't do that, we do have additives for the water, spray gels that help. But the number one thing that helps with teeth is brushing them. As a responsible pet owner, brushing your pet's teeth is a really high top priority. <laughs> Very furry Robert. Yeah, I can read. <laughs> I have a crossbreed, very furry rabbit who lives in the house. Despite giving him very small amounts of his dry food down and fresh hay every day, he just won't eat hay. He gets fresh greenery daily. I can't starve him as rabbits need to keep their stomach going. Any suggestions on how to get him to eat his hay? Ah yes, the hay snob, my favorite and quite frequent. Um, just a tip. Obviously that won't work for this particular customer, but anyone getting a new rabbit, offer hay variety early so that they don't turn into a hay snob. Fresh is important every day. 
might possibly even have to offer hay in the morning and in the afternoon because fresh is best. Make sure you're purchasing hay that's green, is very fragrant. Try different brands of hay, different types of hay. Obviously as an adult, which I'm assuming Haytham is, he's probably on Timothy hay. We have variety hays as well like orchard grass, oat hay, different things you can try to entice his appetite. You can also try putting it in a hay ball, making it interesting. You can try ruffling it every day, little bits of dried fruit that obviously you're going to use sparingly. Mix the treats in so that they have to dig through it and hopefully put some hay in their mouth in the meantime. What can you tell me about hay for my rabbits? Is any type of hay okay? Is hay good for small animals? Should I not use certain types of hay? What special treats can I give my rabbit as well? Thanks. A lot about hay. We like hay here. Guinea pigs can have hay. Hamsters can have hay. Chinchillas have hay. It's mice have hay. So it is very frequently fed. Hay for rabbits is pretty much the most important part of their diet. It is the largest part of their diet. It is what keeps their digestion moving, keeps their teeth trim. It is essential part to their diet. You should not use hay that is white, pink, extremely brown. It's kind of obviously past its point of any kind of nutritional value at that point. You should not use alfalfa hay as a main diet for animals over six months. It is too high in calcium and protein for adult animals. You want to avoid any treats that are high in sugar. Sugar is not good for a rabbit's digestive system. You're looking at Oxbow treats I like. They have some cookies that I find are really good, small bits of fruit. Also the croc makes a good treat as well, once again that low sugar. Crunchy, good for keeping their teeth clean and just good for something that you can kind of bond with your pet. How to prevent tumors in Syrian or any hamster and what are the risk factors? I think a couple things that you can do. One, just make sure you're getting hamsters from a reputable source. Our breeders have been breeding for a long time so they're really responsible in making sure they have a diverse gene pool and healthy breeding stock. Just making sure that they're eating a healthy diet, fresh water. Unfortunately, if it happens, it happens and you'll need to take your hamster to the vet. Working anywhere for that many years is an accomplishment. How what many years? 16 years. What keeps you motivated? Thank you. I do think it's an accomplishment. What keeps me motivated is the fact that my job, I'm always learning. There's so much to learn about pets and there are so many different pets that people keep. There's always something new to learn. Uh, Google and books are something that I am almost constantly looking at to learn more and talking to my customers to learn more. And you know, the pet community is a lovely community. People who love pets are typically pretty cool people. So I get to interact with those people daily. I get to work with those people and I get to cuddle cute animals almost every day. So that's also a bonus. Thank you for submitting your questions to our social media. Once again, my name is Kelsey and I look forward to our next video. If you have any questions about pet and pet care, come on down to Pisces or visit us on Facebook or Instagram and send us any messages that you like. I totally said Instagram. Did you hear it? It was fantastic. <laughs> Instagram.